Hi folks, so we are on to coastal landforms. Um, I introduced those at the end of last week um, in an email, not in a video, uh, because what I've asked you to do so far is simply to watch some other people on YouTube um, who have got really nice video footage and um, diagrams of the landforms, so it's a little bit kind of more interactive than what I, I am able to offer. If you haven't yet watched those videos, um, then stop this video and go back and do that first, would be my advice, okay? Uh, check your email from Friday, and you should find some emails from me with, I think there are five YouTube links um, in an email uh, to watch those. That needs to be your first job. Second job is to find your module booklet and open it to page 29 um, because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be creating revision notes on your coastal landforms because it's really important to learn them. Um, you are definitely going to get some kind of a question about coastal landforms. I don't know which one, but you will definitely get them in a question at some point and you need to know what they look like so you could recognise them in a photograph and how they are formed. But we need to know how they're formed at an A-level standard, not a GCSE standard. So what I'm saying is this is a part of the syllabus that I really need you to put lots of time and effort into. Page 29 has a complete list of the landforms that you need to cover. Um, and it's got a little bit of instruction about the task. Basically, I don't care about the format. You can do a poster, you can do a PowerPoint, you can do handwritten notes, revision cards, as ever. That doesn't bother me. It's knowing what they look like and being able to explain how they're formed that is the really crucial thing. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through erosional landforms and then I'll do a separate video on depositional. And the idea is that with the videos and this, hopefully together, you should get the information that you need. Okay, so headlands and bays. Headlands are the sticky outy bits. So this image we're looking from above and the bays are the bits that go in and it's pretty straightforward. Again, we've got a nice bit of alliteration. Hard rocks form headlands because as you now know, different rocks will erode at different speeds. Hard rocks take much longer to erode and so you end up with that particular bit of the coastline sticking out into the sea. Hard rocks form headlands, soft rocks form bays. Okay, so um, it's essentially that you get different speeds of erosion depending on rock type, which of course you've just written a 15 mark question about. So thank you very much for that. Here's a real life photo. So here is the hard rock sticking out. There's another bit there and the softer rock forms these bays. Okay, now you may possibly have covered these at GCSE, but I would have thought it's unlikely. Concordant and discordant coastlines. This is important. This is a concordant coastline where you have the same rock type all the way along. This is a discordant coastline. Discordant for different, okay? Try and find little ways to help you remember whenever you can. So this is the one that we've been talking about. The hard rock forms the headland, the soft rock forms the bay. It's kind of obvious that that coastline is going to form headlands and bays. But you can get variations in the same rock type. And the most famous example is Lulworth Cove. Now Lulworth Cove is on the south coast of Dorset. Um, and as you can see, it's very beautiful. But if you can imagine that that rock was still continuous, that is the same rock type. So we are talking here about a concordant coastline. And I need you to make sure that you can understand why you can get effectively, it's called a cove because it's a much smaller feature than a bay, but essentially you can get headlands and bays even if the rock type is the same, which doesn't seem to make a huge amount of sense. So what you have to imagine is that there's some kind of line of weakness in this rock. There's a fault or a crack or a joint. There is a line of weakness in this hard rock. 
And of course, what we know now is that's going to get weathered. It's going to be eroded by processes like hydraulic action. And that line of weakness will just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And over the decades, as that line of weakness gets bigger, it will break its way through this layer of hard rock. And once your um, erosional processes are into this softer rock, obviously the erosion is going to start to go sideways. And that, ladies and gents, is why you have Lulworth Cove. You've got the hard rock here, you've got the softer rock here, and then it stops here because you've got another band of hard rock. Okay, so you need to spend a little bit longer making sure that you can understand headlands and bays in the discordant, which is fairly straightforward and obvious, but also the concordant, which is a bit harder. Wave cut notches and platforms. Now, obviously, you can pause the video at this point and copy that down. If you're a more visual learner, I would do your entire set of notes about wave cut notches and platforms on a diagram. Okay, so I'm going to explain here but what you have to imagine is that the sequence of events I'm going to talk you through has been going on for decades at least. So what you can see here is you've got a cliff with this little cutout bit at the bottom. And that bit is the wave cut notch. And that's where the waves are eroding the bottom of the cliff at high tide. All right? They don't erode up here because the waves are not going to reach up here. So the waves attack the bottom and you get this notch, this little cutting in shape. Now, if you can imagine now, there's nothing hanging, sorry, there's nothing holding up this section hanging over the top. And with processes of weathering and mass movement, eventually that whole chunk of cliff is going to collapse into the sea. And then the whole cliff line is now going to be further back. So the cliff has gone further back and the whole process will repeat. You'll get another wave cut notch, the overhang will collapse and the whole cliff goes backwards, backwards, backwards. So that's what those dotted lines are all about. It's where the cliff used to be and as this sequence of events just repeats itself, the cliff goes further and further back. This bit at the bottom that gets left behind is called a wave cut platform. And it looks, in reality, a bit like a sort of a natural pavement, maybe. So here's the wave cut notch. There's the overhang above. And what gets left behind is the wave cut platform. And there's a much bigger example there for you. All right. So it kind of looks like a naturally created pavement is how I describe them. But if you're a visual learner, draw something like that and annotate it. If you're better with words, pause the video at that point and copy that down. Okay. These are generally pretty well known, caves, arches, stacks and stumps, and they're worth learning together because they are different stages of the same process. All right, so here again, for visual learners, you've got a sequence of diagrams. Generally, you get caves, arches, stacks and stumps in headlands. All right, so headlands are lumps of hard rock that stick out into the sea. And again, we're talking here about a line of weakness. Even hard rocks are going to have faults or cracks or joints in them. And what's going to happen to that line of weakness is it's going to be attacked by erosional and weathering processes, and it will form a cave. That will keep happening, and the cave will get bigger and bigger and bigger, until you get an arch. Now the difference between a cave and an arch is a cave will be dark, whereas an arch, there is daylight. You can actually, it's gone all the way through to the other side of the headland, and you can see daylight through to the other side. All right, so cave, dark, arch, daylight. It doesn't take a genius to work out that eventually what's going to happen is that this lump of rock is not really being supported by anything, and that is going to collapse, and that would be mass movement, probably a rock fall. So you're going to lose the top of your arch, that is a stack, and the stack gets smaller and smaller and smaller over time because of weathering, erosion and mass movement, and becomes a stump. So cave, dark, arch, daylight, stack, stump. And there's a little YouTube clip there that you can watch that will talk you through it. 
So I would learn cave arch stack and stump together, ladies and gents, because they are all different stages of the same process. Okay. Blow holes are uh, not that common. Um, so you probably won't have heard these before. If you're thinking, hang on, don't whales have blowholes? It's a similar kind of a principle, uh, which is why they have the same name. So you will have cracks in rocks. We've established that. Even your hardest, hardest rock is going to have a crack in it somewhere. And that's going to get attacked by weathering and erosion. Any line of weakness will be targeted by those processes. And the idea is that when the wave hits the bottom of the cliff, if the crack is big enough, the water will actually travel all the way through that crack and it will come out the top of the blowhole. So you can see a couple of photographs here. They're quite spectacular things. There's a little video clip there if you want to see uh, what happens when the wave hits the bottom of the cliff and the water spurts out the top. It's quite cool. It's quite impressive. Uh, this diagram is clearly not it's exaggerated, that is not possible because that lump of rock would appear to be hanging in midair, which is a complete load of tosh. But what the diagram is trying to get across is the basic idea of the process. So the wave comes in the bottom, the water comes up through the crack and you get this kind of eruption of seawater at the top. So that's a blowhole. Geos are hardly ever, uh, people have ever heard of these before. They are defined, as it says in the text, as a narrow, steep-sided inlet. All right? Okay. Hopefully, you're beginning to notice some repetition of the things I'm saying. Geos will be um, weaknesses in a hard rock. So, joints, cracks, faults. We've kept using those words over and over again. And those lines of weakness you've guessed it, get targeted by weathering and erosional processes. And so the line of weakness will get bigger. And that is a geo, and that is a geo. One of the obvious questions is, how do you tell the difference between a bay and a geo? Well, generally geos are much smaller. You're talking a few metres across, whereas headlands and bays, you're, you know, tens or hundreds of metres across. So there is a scale difference. But also, Go for the narrow, steep-sided inlet. So yes, size is part of it, the fact it's narrow, but you can see in these photographs the geo is very steep-sided and you don't necessarily get that in a bay. But they will only use photographs that are kind of really obvious. All right, so that is all of your erosional ones. So your mission is to choose a format, maybe lots and lots of diagrams, maybe lots and lots of text, and to create yourself, I was going to leave it on that one, to create yourself some revision notes so that, just to emphasise the key ideas, you could recognise each of these landforms in a photograph or maybe on a map, and secondly, that you would be able to explain exactly how that landform was created. All right, and then what I'm going to do in the next video is I will go through the depositional features in exactly the same way. All right, so um, I will email to clarify the task, but that is uh, essentially it. Thanks, everybody.